Hey, what's going on guys? This is Miasin L. Welcome again to my top 5 really good tips at improving at the game by avoiding misplays, playing better, etc. So these are going to be really technical little details that are going to impact the outcome of your YCS, your regional, etc. So without further ado, well actually no, one further ado is asking you to like and subscribe because it motivates me a lot to keep making videos like these. <laughs> and yeah, let, now let's actually get to into it. So uh, usually when you have a search card in your draw card, you actually want to use your draw draw card first because the draw card is actually a random card you don't know what's going to be in top of your deck whereas the search card you want to have as much information as possible in order to kind of you kind of actually decide more freely like choose more freely sorry uh, so otherwise it might actually end up in like an awkward situation so for example right now I'm using the search card first to get my cybernetic overflow and then I'm using my draw card and what ends up happening is that I draw a second overflow and naturally it's a hard once per turn so the second one is completely dead and because of that you know imagine if the upstart was used first it got me the overflow the core could have actually searched like an emergency or a cyber load or something like that. I would have had two different cards so I would have had potentially more plays and you can obviously extrapolate this uh, cyber dragon is obviously not the only deck that I uh, can do that and uh, besides I wouldn't even play upstart goblin and cyber dragon anyways I'll play pot of prosperity but prosperity follows the same logic basically it's not really that you're drawing three cards but you're almost drawing one of three cards in a way but you're still not choosing that much so even 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 with core and prosperity i would still go prosperity first and then core just so if my prosperity gets like an emergency for example i can go emergency into fear and then when i normal core i can go chilling one uh, core and then chain link to fear and then my core is guaranteed to resolve i can make a link to i can play from there and usually that kind of leads to otks like regardless because this just two monsters at already 6800 damage thanks to anaconda and uh a rampage your boys so that's it for tip number one and now let's get into tip number two all right so for tip number two it's actually playing around called by the grave but in a pretty interesting manner so as you can see i have a pretty stacked graveyard i mean i have two fractor whatever fractal and then i have the nerval the wind barrier storm winds and what actually might end up happening here is that my opponent has called by the grave what happens if if I actually use the effect uh, right now if my opponent uses called by the grave pro uh, like preemptively I'm not going to waste my effect of a uh, fractal or I'm going to banish two other cards in case he banished like a uh, nerval or storm winds but just assuming that I only had one fractal or whatever it doesn't change anything just look at what, what might actually end up going really wrong so right now I'm actually banishing the two cards that aren't fractal and my opponent is chained called by the grave to actually banish one of them in the graveyard and because of that I kind of lost an effect on the field but I kind of could have played around it if I searched a card that didn't exist in my graveyard at all with the effect of Nerval when my opponent couldn't use the called by the grave yet or you know just banish the Fractor as a cost so that this way my opponent wouldn't be able to use called by the grave on it obviously like I said he could have used it preemptively but we're just going under the assumption that he kind of just woke up to the fact that he could actually chain to the effect because obviously not everybody plays perfectly and this is the kind of uh, misplay that you can can personally capitalize on so again this is pretty much a double tip in a way use your call by the grave preemptively and also banish the cards in your graveyard that could actually have a relevance as um in a in the form of monsters that you might actually want to summon for example when electrum was a two when your first electrum actually hit the graveyard and your opponent had a call by the grave if you summon the second electrum the call by the grave actually functioned as an imperm because you could actually just banish the first electrum and then it's not really like just normal pendulum monsters which never hit the graveyard so called by the grave was usually dead this time it actually hurt the electrum really really hard so if you could actually find a way to banish your own electrum for your grave from your graveyard the second time you summon electrum your opponent cannot use called by the grave against it which is really really nice and again strands migration prophecy cards like back to the front call of the haunted etc Haquero, all that beautiful package those are great ways to actually play around called by the grave and ghost bell i mean that's just a soft direct hit well i mean kind of hard actually <laughs> but yeah that's it for a tip number three i believe let's get into tip number four yeah i definitely lied that was a uh, tip number two 
<laughs> so basically, this is tip number three. But basically, as you can see, my opponent has a Thoroughblade which can transform itself into a Drancia. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to go first, whatever, summon the Drancia. And then what's going to happen, and you might actually laugh, but this was really, really popular in 2017. And this was a misplay that I saw so many people do, and it makes no sense. So for example, when you activate Diagram, what's the first thing that you that actually pops up in your head? Are you like, oh, this is direct pressure? Should I destroy it now? Or eh, whatever, just, let's just wait until they use the effect. Because when you think about it, it's a soft ones per turn. It's not a hard ones per turn. So you gain absolutely nothing by destroying the card when it actually is trying to use its effect. And also, it, there's no cost for Diagram. It has absolutely no cost. The destruction is part of the effect. And this is the kind of thing that might actually play against you because let's just say you actually let the Diagram success uh, resolve successfully and then you only try to destroy it when it uses its, its effect. Your opponent can actually chain something like Forbidden Chalice, negate the Drancia, so this is kind of like a uh, two for one. No, I, yeah, I mean, and two, uh, two in one, sorry, because the Drancia is completely negated, and then your diagram resolves, and on top of that, you don't have to destroy any other cards in your hand or in your field. You can actually destroy the Forbidden Chalice that is actually resolving. This is really, really nice, and people were not doing that enough in 2017, but if people were, it actually would have had uh, a bit more... It, the impact wouldn't have been that huge, but again, the small little details are the ones that make the biggest difference. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that you have to be aware of, man, when your opponent uses Diagram and other cards like that. There are more examples, for example, when your opponent has a, I don't know, a monster effect that activates in your hand and also on the field, and you're like, man, whatever, I'll, I'll let the in-hand effect resolve and I'll just negate it once it hits the field. And then when you do negate it, your opponent goes Forbidden Drop to send the monster that's actually trying to resolve to negate the monster effect that you're using to negate to their own monster effects so man forbidden job send dingirsu for example to play around the i don't know skill drain and stuff like that was actually a pretty pretty big move but yeah that's it for tip number three this time now let's get to tip number four all right so i'm pretty sure everybody knows this but actually not necessarily everybody if you're kind of new to the game or something you might not know how lingering effects actually function because they actually also don't start a chain they just happen they just uh, during the end phase you pretty much have to just say i'm I'm checking the effect, I'm resolving the effect to discard or pay the, I don't know, the maintenance cost, for example, something like that. There are certain cards like that that just don't trigger, don't start a chain whatsoever, whereas other cards actually do start a chain, even though they're not quick effects. So the end phase is actually really complicated because of a few of these reasons, and I'm might make a video on the end phase later on, but it's not as complicated as something really sketch like the damage step, which is, well, I mean the battle step, I guess you can say, which is the most complicated thing in the game, actually. I understand why people are confused with that one. Anyways, now you're using Card of Demise, and you're going into the end phase, and now you might be thinking, well, that Tin Can is not the greatest, because whichever card you're actually searching, you have to discard. Well, that's not the case, because Card of Demise actually says during the end phase, you actually have to discard your whole hand, but Tin Can says during the end phase, you can search a card from your deck to your hand, meaning that if you actually choose to check to the discard from Card of Demise first, you can actually discard your whole hand, which, you know, completes the effect of Card of Demise, there is no longer a drawback, and then you can actually search. So this is exactly what's going to happen. Obviously, you can't really see it, it's kind of transparent, but yes, indeed, I actually went to check the effect to Card of, of Card of Demise. Same thing with Into the Void, by the way, they function the exact same way. Of course, now they're both one-ofs, but there was a time, a dreadful time, where both of them were three-ofs, and Cosmo Demise actually was a deck. Ironically, it was a competitive deck during 2016 format, so yeah, that's it for Tip number three, pretty, pretty nice. You don't have to discard your hand. So you have a Dark Destroyer during your opponent's turn, man. Let's go. And now let's get into the fifth and final tip. All right, this is an insane one because I see a lot of people getting trapped by this and getting trapped in all of the literal senses of the expression or whatever, the, 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 whatever I'm supposed to say. Basically, every time I play against a true Draco player, I manage to do the exact same trick 
all of the time and it's actually hilarious. <laughs> Let's just say you have a Draco spell with Dynamite or, and no, actually, any, any Draco monster, it doesn't matter because they all have the effect to trigger on the field. So you're actually setting your card or you're activating it and then you're getting your tribute summon. Uh, by the way, this is actually, again, another double tip because if you're using the effect of Disciples or Heritage to actually extra tribute, you're actually safe from Solemn Morning. Whereas if you actually just inherently tribute summoned, you can actually get Solemn Morning and also even if you have Heritage after that, since your Dynamite summon was negated, it never really hit the field. So your Heritage will only draw for the Disciples and not for the Dynamite. So definitely make sure you always get those extra tribute summons even when you don't really need them, you know, just to make sure you play around Solemn Morning, Solemn Judgment, etc. But anyways, now we're getting that summon of uh, the Draco monster, and this is the crazy part. I feel like you can maybe predict what's going to happen, but we're actually targeting the middle card. The middle, watch carefully, our opponent is chaining a random card that isn't even the one that we're targeting, and it's a random card. It applies no threats to us whatsoever. It's like a freaking Salamandrate circle. I couldn't care less, but if you're actually really trigger happy, and you don't really think really far, what's going to happen is that you might be like, ah, yeah, you use the card effect on Gabunga, I'm gonna chain dynamite because it gets me a free plus one, you know, but then you get cucked by Solemn Strike. So, uh, uh, now you're actually a big loser. Your opponent has one more card than you. So at the end of the day, what you should actually do is only chain to the back row that uh, you're actually targeting if the other card that you're using is actually a threat to you, because in this case, your dynamite is going down regardless. If you're not, if you're getting solemn strike, well, good for you because your opponent had to commit fifteen hundred life points, which is good. But if they use something like Salamandrite Circle, oh my God, don't play into strike. Strike is really popular and really high ceiling. So if you can play around it, definitely do try to play around it. So this are, I mean, all of these plays honestly they came up so much in the past, literally every single one of them. So if you actually learn something new from this video, please. Please, please, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any comments, feedback, whatever, also definitely let me know. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it motivates me a lot to keep making videos like these. And I will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>